What's up guys, Sparky Izzy here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you what it's like hooking up a backup generator to a house during a power outage. My first video on this YouTube channel was showing how to hook up a generator to a house and how to operate it, but I never got to show a video of me actually having to use it. and. The time finally came, we had some storms roll in and the power went out for a couple hours. So I went ahead and hooked up the generator just to keep the lights, the fridge and some other miscellaneous things running. And I'm gonna show you the realistic process on how to do it. Luckily the storm moved in pretty quick and by the time I got the generator out there, it was just drizzling, it wasn't raining that much. But I have this gen tent cover and it helps protect the generator from rain just as an extra precaution, I'm sure the generator's rated to get rained on, but I like to have that tent over it. And it's designed so that it doesn't cover the exhaust so that the tent doesn't catch on fire. Another thing I like to do to give me peace of mind is run a cable and lock through the generator and just lock it to the house to make sure that nobody can steal it. After these steps are completed, the next thing to do is plug in the cord to the generator and into the inlet box. So the male side of the cord is gonna go plug into the generator and the female end is gonna plug into the inlet. The inlet is what back feeds the electrical panel. The interlock is designed to where the utility power and the generator power cannot be on at the same time. And without having an interlock kit can hurt a utility worker, it could kill them. So you wanna make sure that you have this installed before you try to run a generator on your house. So keep in mind at this point, the generator is off and I also don't have any utility power because there's a power outage. So what I did first is I shut off the main breaker and here I'm just kind of reviewing the breakers to see what they're feeding, but I'm gonna end up shutting off all the breakers besides the breaker that feeds a, a surge protector. And the idea behind this is that before I turn on the generator, I need to make sure that all the loads on the house are off. So I'm gonna come over here and walk to the generator and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. As you can see, I don't have any neighbors that have power. The only lights you see are any type of solar lights like the one I have right now. And a couple of neighbors have a couple solar lights but that's the only thing that's running in this neighborhood right now. So this generator, it runs off gas or propane and to start it, it has its own battery so you can start it with the key and if for some reason you didn't have any charge on the battery, there's a string that you can pull to manually start the generator. But before I start it, I want to make sure that the gas is engaged and I want to make sure that it's on choke because once you start it, you're going to move it from choke to run. So here, I'm starting the generator. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and then I'm gonna come over here and move it from choke to run. And you'll hear the generator kind of ramp up and it's gonna get to its normal operating speed. And over here back of the panel, you can see that the inlet box is connected with the green light. And this is gonna be back feeding the panel right now. So with the main breaker off, I'm gonna turn on the generator inlet breaker and start turning on all the 20 amp loads like the receptacles and the fridge and some lighting. And I'm gonna go over here to the backyard and turn on some exterior lights that I have plugged in just so I can get some lights around the house. But as you can tell, I, the soffit lights came on the garage light came on and I'm the only one in the neighborhood right now that has power. So that's pretty cool. And here I'm putting the garage door back in service. Now that I have power, I can close it automatically. So inside, I'm gonna show you just a little walkthrough of what's working, 
um, pretty much all the lighting and all the general receptacles are working. Um, at this time, it was about three, or two, three in the morning, and my wife and daughter were asleep in the room, so I at least wanted to get the AC working. Now with the generator that I have, I can run the AC unit, I just can't run the heater. So during the Texas storm um, a couple years ago or a year ago, I wouldn't be able to use the heater on the house, but I could use space heaters. You know, so I could plug in my phone as you can see and charge it, turn on and off the lights, and I don't know, it feels like I have power. Now there's some generators that are rated to, you know, run the whole house. But in my situation, it's just for emergencies, mainly just when the power goes out, just to have some general lighting and being able to use basic things. But if you wanted a generator like that, it's probably gonna be pad mounted. It's probably gonna be like a Generac or something. And it's gonna be a lot bigger. It's gonna be capable of running the whole house. But I will say that it's definitely a cool feeling knowing that if the power goes out, I'm not relying just on the utility company. I feel like no matter where you live, you should have this mindset because you never know when the power might go out. You could even Google um, blackouts that happened back in the day. There was times where they were having like huge blackouts across the nation and no one had power. But if you just simply made an investment on a generator for your house, even if you don't put the inlet box, you can run some extension cords into the house and still use some basic things. So I think no matter what, it's an investment towards your house. And if you add the inlet, you're also providing value there when you sell the house, if you sell the house, because you now have a generator inlet already installed. I ended up going back outside and turning on the AC and lowering it um, to start cooling the house. Once the utility came back on, you know, I got a phone call saying that the power came back on, but you pretty much are gonna do the reverse steps that you did to start it. And right here, I have a picture of a sticker that's on my panel and what you do is when you're starting the generator you start from one you go to two three four five six and when you're shutting it off you pretty much just do it in the reverse order so I hope this video helps somebody I hope it showed you what it's like to run a generator on your house during a storm during a power outage if you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out if you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments, and if I know the answer to them, I can get back to you. Sparky Izzy, peace.